Hey everybody, it's PJ from Wisconsin Air Gunners. And today, in this box to bench, I have the pleasure of introducing you to the Avenge X Tactical in 22 caliber. This is the... I don't exactly know what to call it. The successor... I don't know that it's a direct replacement. Um, maybe evolution or upgrade of the Avenger. Maybe that's the right terminology. Um, but I'm pretty excited about this rifle and based on the fact that when I interviewed Tyler Patner at SHOT Show in January, um, about 32,000 of you guys have watched that interview and kind of walked through on the rifle. My guess is um, you folks are fairly excited for this to hit the market as well. And my understanding now is that these rifles are, if not already shipping, uh, getting ready to be shipped. So what do we got going on today? This is a box to bench video and what my goal for a box to bench is, is to show you what you can expect coming out of the box and going direct to the bench. Minimal setup, throw a scope on, get a moderator on there, air in, throw some pellets in a magazine, and see how she shoots down range. Now along the way, um, we'll give you some idea of what the velocity is looking like out of the box. Uh, now this is a, a very tunable and user configurable air gun. You have control over uh, regulator pressure, hammer spring tension, you have a, a transfer port adjustment, you can change calibers, and you can pull the action out of, in my case, the tactical stock and put it into a wood stock. Um, those wood stock options have kind of a, a bullpup to semi bullpup configuration. You also have uh, a more traditional uh, synthetic stock. You can put, uh, if you don't, this one is a, a tube, a uh, tube air cylinder. You can put a carbon fiber bottle on there. Uh, there is a lot going on. Did I mention change calibers? Um, basically, what I anticipate is working with Air Venturi, there will be a series of videos that walk through my experience uh, with this rifle, almost an ecosystem. And uh, my hope is that you'll find some value in watching some of those videos. I know that I have a plan to um, convert one from a tube to a bottle, um, and I anticipate being able to film a caliber change for you. So um, stay tuned for that. Today, today however, this is box to bench. So we're gonna get this out of the box and we're gonna get some shooting done because that's what's got me excited. The opportunity to really see what this has to offer. Um, they've definitely made an upgrade in the packaging. I remember my first Avenger coming in in what was kind of a, a plain brown wrapper. Um, you got nice printing on here. Um, on their end, some marketing because they show you all the different options. Um, this is going to be upside down. That's no good to look at. So what's in this box is the tactical tube. Um, there's also the tactical bottle. Uh, and like I said, multi-caliber. Mine's in 22, but it also does the 177 and the 25 as options. see what we have. Manual. Um, it's packed. It's packed in sort of a cardboard um, surround. Pretty well protected and all your bits and pieces seem to be taped in. So hold for a second please. Looks like you're going to get a full o-ring kit which is nice. Um, The 
Okay, it looks like two magazines, one a little bigger than the other. Um, set of Allen wrenches. It looks basically like they give you the tools and parts to fix or adjust anything you would need. So you wouldn't need your own tool set, but I'm guessing a lot of you have tools that you like. And then the rifle. There she is. All right, well, let's start at the back and take a look at what we've got. This is a telescoping adjustable length buttstock. Um, it looks like it's affixed by a buffer tube. So if you need to make any adjustments to this, um, or this comes loose. All right, this is it is not staked, and it's only really like hand tight. So you may want to get yourself access to what's called a castle nut wrench, so that you can tighten this up. Um, you've got what appears to be an AR style pistol grip. It's got the one uh, finger bump there. Pretty comfortable. Uh, you got a screwed on plate there so you'd probably have to take that off to get in to replace that if you wanted to. Got a nice trigger. Metal blade for those of you who are concerned about such things. Um, so this has a screw here which means this is what you'd replace to move the cocking handle from the right side to the left side. Um, this is the back side of the transfer port. You have a blue gauge, which is your regulator pressure. Um, and then air cylinder, Picatinny rail, barrel band, that's metal, out front. So, nice heavy um, cover for your fill port. The fill pressure on this is 300 bar, so that's like 4,300 something PSI. So, like the Avenger, high fill pressure. You do get standard half UNF, sorry about that, half UNF threads out front, so you can pop your favorite moderator on there. If I turn this around and come back the other way, um, uh, okay, pausing for a second on that, my only, I won't call it a complaint, but my only, the only thing I, well, the stock on the original Avenger was, was plasticky. It was meant to hit, built to hit a certain price point. They hit it, and and I think they smashed it. Like, it was a really great rifle. Still is a really great rifle. Very accurate. Um, but, you know, that stock wasn't great. Um, there is some polymer on this. This body section on this particular one is really, like, outstanding. It, it's plastics, but it's, it's nice. Um, here is your fill pressure, which is in red. Um, honestly, if I were designing, I would have done red for regulator pressure and blue for bottle pressure, but they went backwards, so, um, your red gauge is your fill pressure. You've got your transfer port adjustment here, and it looks like you would loosen that little Allen and then move it. You got your side lever here, 
Um, let's talk about the side lever when we get to actually shooting. Safety is here. Very positive. Just snicks right into place. Um, and then we're back to the back of the rifle. It's a fairly long rifle. You've got a, uh, looks like a QD swing, sling, not swing, sling mount right here. Um, you also have a cutout for a strap style of um, sling back here. So pretty well thought out. The plastic on the buttstock, really nice. All right, so that's a walk around to the rifle. Um, going to put some air in it and let's see what the trigger pull is like. All right, let's take um, let's take a moment and consider the trigger pull. But on the way there, how about cocking? So the first part of the cocking stroke. Um, it feels like there's like a detent or something that kind of keeps it into the rifle, which is just fine. So you pull past that. Well, it's pretty smooth cocking. Uh, it's just one stop back and basically at about 90 degrees, uh, the rifle is cocked. And then it moves forward and it kind of, you know, snicks into place. Um, for the benefit of anybody at YouTube, let's just say, um, on a private range, all relevant safety pro protocols are being followed. There's nobody downrange, and I'm shooting an air gun, an air rifle, a pellet rifle, not a firearm. Okay, there is movement back to a wall on the trigger. So I'm at that wall. A little pressure. So it's not ultra crisp. But it's not bad either. Um, there's really not much creep. It's just like you hit a wall and then you got to pull through it. So let's see what that weight is like. One pound, 12.9 ounces. One pound, 12.4 ounces. One pound, 13.6 ounces. So like one and three quarters pounds basically um, is going to be your average. Which, uh, that's pretty nice. Um, as far as without a moderator, it's not unpleasant to shoot my guess is we can make it a little bit quieter and my guess is you're going to want it to be a little bit quieter um, someone would definitely know you're shooting an air gun well with trigger weight in the books let's get some pellets in a magazine and maybe a scope up here and let's get some velocity information for you so we're ready to go on the bench, I have mounted up an Element Optics Helix 6-24, it's a second focal plane scope. I've got it in some UTG quick disconnect rings, which is nice because this is the scope I bring on and off a lot of the review guns. Um, because these rings are on the medium height, I need to use the smaller 10 round magazine as opposed to the bigger 15 round magazine because um, the 10 fits in no problem 
but the 15 I would need to either move this forward or back so the saddle of the scope isn't over this gap or I'd need to use higher rings. Uh, not a big deal, um, but something to make note of. Going to be recording speed on the um, FX True Ballistic Chronograph. Got it hooked up to my phone so I can show you guys the results. And uh, you won't see this, but I'm shooting out to 30 yards and I'll try to get the scope sorted so right as soon as I get done with this, it can um, actually shoot some groups for you. So, um, yeah, this is uh, first pellets downrange. Nine thirteen, and by the way, I'm shooting JSB eighteen grains. Nine twelve. Nine fourteen. Nine oh nine. Nine thirteen. Nine fourteen. Nine ten. Nine eleven. So, 10 shot group, high of 914, low of 909, average of 912, spread of 5, and a standard deviation of 1.9. And that is straight out of the box. And the kind of cool thing about that with this rifle is those numbers could be whatever you want them to be because... Um, you have full access to all the tuning potential on the rifle. Um, you could certainly, uh, my regulator pressure is just under 2,000 PSI. If I was going to guess on the bar, it's a little bit small, 125 bar. So that could be adjusted up or down, depending on what you wanted to shoot. Um, and you have full adjustment of the hammer spring and you add on top of that transfer port adjustment which for me is wide open. Um, the transfer port adjuster is down in kind of a well here behind the action. Um, so you either have to remove the scope or pull the uh, buffer tube off to get in and, and adjust it. 
but for me right now box to bench you know i'm just showing you what i'm getting out of the out of the bench i know that this was pulled off the shelf i know they pressure tested it and i know that they made sure it wasn't in awful disarray but by no means did anybody tune this gun for me this is just how it came from pyramid air um, depending on who you order this gun through what retailer um, you know pyramid air has some different services that they offer for um, you know they do like a 10 shot for ten dollars and, and they have a couple other things um, so you might check with them if you want a particular result for a particular pellet like i said i'm using jsb 1813s and um you know if you go to like utah air guns or something like that um i know they offer different and maybe more advanced even tuning services and probably Cerakote and all that and i'm guessing pyramid will do that too and there are lots of other retailers out there and each one will will do different things i'm just trying to show you how one out of the box off the shelf with no tuning behaves and i gotta be honest with you those are solid chronograph numbers um, that that's yeah a five foot per second spread over 10 shots yes please um, now the only th other thing that you probably can't see uh, that I've done is put a moderator on um, I went with one of my old favorites the Tatsu from Donnie FL the shroud is improved on the Avenge X over the Avenger rifle. It's capable of supporting a little bit more weight. Um, so it's possible that you'd get great results from one of the new Yokozuna or Ryu moderators. Um, but for initial testing, I'm just sticking with the Tatsu. Um, they do have in their shroud a baffle stack and at the end of that baffle stack, it's been improved. I think they um, took a nod from what Donnie FL did with their Avenger mod, uh, adapter. Um, there is a little segment that slips over the end of the barrel. I did take that apart just to, just to look at it. So you've got sort of a little barrel centering thing and then some, uh, it's kind of like a cage with some baffles in it and then um, that part's plastic, but then the adapter itself or the threaded part that goes into the end of the barrel shroud is metal, and that's what's got your either thread protector or half UNF threads. So like I said, I've got a 2225 Tatsu on here, and with pellets in, you guys just heard me shooting, it's really down to just a p uh, very, very much at this point backyard friendly. But I know you want accuracy, so let me put a camera down range. Um, let me get everything all set ready for that, and uh, we'll show you some groups. Before I run that camera down range, um, I want to talk about the magazines because I think, uh, and maybe it's been a while since I've seen a, an Avenger magazine, but I think they've actually made a little bit of an upgrade. Um, so. You know, it's a standard, like you've seen these a lot, but, you know, you, you rotate in the direction of the arrow, and when it rotates around, it actually exposes the first hole, the pinning hole. So you don't have to do the, um, the feed it backwards from the back side. Um, and I just don't remember that. I've seen some other magazines that have kind of been redesigned to um, provide that functionality, I guess is what I want to say. But um, definitely liking that in um, in these mags. Both the, the big one, the 15 rounder, and the little 10 rounder um, have that same function. So you, you see there's a wider wider inlet um, and I think that's what allows for that to, to function that way. So, nice. If I missed something and, and that's been around for a while, I apologize. But uh, definitely like that more than trying to feed one 
um, tail first from the back side. All right, action camera is downrange. Uh, I've got a new magazine loaded, and we're going to do a couple of groups at uh, the target happens to be at 32 yards. So 32 is the distance that we are shooting at. Okay, well you've seen two groups now. Um, the first group was pretty good. Certainly in the half inch range, but that second group, well, the, first, the first three pellets went exactly through the same hole. Um, and then there was just a little bit of a, a shift down, so those are looking pretty good. And I think what that warrants is resetting that target out to 50 yards. And let's see what she does at 50. I verified that we are at 50 yards, 50.2 on that rangefinder. I've got a fresh magazine in the air gun, still running off the same charge. Um, I checked the air and we've got plenty before we hit down to the regulator. Um, so I think depending on how you have this gun tuned, there's a lot of shots even uh, with the tube version. And I think that tube is somewhere like 210, no, it's got to be more than that. Let me, let me check on that. That tube's only 210 cc's, and I filled it to 250 bar, so it's got more overhead. Uh, I guess we haven't been shooting a lot. We've only shot 20, and so this will be 30, but we're... Yeah, we're still at 200 bar, so plenty of space to shoot. So let's... Uh, Let's do a few more groups. I did dial up six clicks. This is a, a mill scope, MRAD scope. So six clicks up.
drop that one out of the group. All right, group two. All right, let's go down there, grab those targets, and uh, have a little chat about them. Well, we're back to the bench, and you've seen the groups. I guess it's conclusion time. Um, I'm going to call this one uh, a winner so far. I have lots more playing around with this to do, but uh, these are... Our two groups at 30 yards, 32 yards. So here's the first one. And here's the second one. And then we go over to the 50-yard groups, um, and, and I firmly believe I let the gun down on this one. Um, I was holding, and I just, I kind of lapsed, and the trigger went. Um, so I'll take that one. So there's that first group uh, with my errant shot. And here's that group without my errant shot. And then here's that second group. And while the velocity um, and the deviation and all that good stuff is amazing and spot on. Um, I actually think the velocity is a little high for the 18 grain pellets. So I think long term I will probably detune this one a little bit. Um, probably see what mileage I can get out of a little bit of backing off on the hammer spring and maybe even reduce that regulator pressure a little bit. But again, that's, that's more than what happens on a box to bench. Uh, my aim, well, I guess that's a pun, um, is to help you understand what you're likely to be getting out of the box if you pick up one of these rifles from your favorite retailer. I think Air Venturi has another winner on their hands here. Um, it is absolutely everything I like about the Avenger, which was accuracy. And it adds in some modularity, meaning I can reconfigure this into different things to shoot different shooting styles. And I can, if I want, on top of all the other tuning options, I can change caliber. So I can take this down to a 177 if I want. I can bring it up to a 25 if I want. Pretty neat trick given the price point that these rifles are coming in at. Um, the cocking is good. Um, you do have to give it a pull at the end. Um, and the trigger is good. Um, it is, there's a little bit of a, a roll to pull through that, that second stage. 
Um, and I might try a different grip on here just because I'd like I'd like the grip moved back just a little bit because I, I have some finger well, arthritis issues. So, um, But the trigger is very workable and doesn't take away anything from accuracy. It's really exactly what you want. Um, uh, hats off, if I wore a lot of hats, I would take it off to Air Venturi. This is a, a really, really good gun. Um, I like that they've gone with a little bigger magazine. Um, and I think for long-term setup, uh, not just review purposes, I'd probably go with a little bit higher ring so I can use this 15 rounder, which would be nice out if uh, we were busting some iguanas. Um, I'd like to thank Air Venturi and Pyramid Air, uh, my friend Tyler Patner, for sending this out for review. Uh, that's very much appreciated. And uh, I will throw this back to my friend. Come down to Florida and let's you and I go smash some iguanas with a couple of Avenge X's. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was uh, informative, maybe even entertaining. And until the next one, everybody, shoot safe, shoot straight, and we'll see you around.